Hey everybody, you saw the second slide, this is me. Thanks for having me back, it's your last month. Uh, last month I gave a lightning talk on Action Cable and went over some of the key terms, uh, the new Action Cable files and the code that come along with the Rails Beta 2 application, and then showed you a really quick demo. Um, this talk, we're gonna build out a chat application from the ground, and I'll, we'll explore these new files and new commands a lot more. Um, but first, let's do a little bit of a review. Um, Action Cable, is a full uh, WebSockets framework that allows for real-time updates to your Rails application. Uh, if you're not familiar with WebSockets, WebSockets, uh, WebSockets are great because a typical HTT request uh, has to open and close every time a single document is loaded. However, WebSockets keeps the connection open and allows data to be sent back and forth any number of times. Um, PubStub, which stands for Publisher Subscriber, uh, refers to that data mess transfer messaging pattern. PubSub links transmit over Action Cable's channels. Channels is the term you see the most with Action Cable. Uh, in a newly generated Rails 5 application, you'll have channel files on both the server side and the client side um, to handle the WebSocket connections. And Action Cable uses broadcasts to transmit data over these connections. So as we go about building this app, uh, I'll explain these terms a lot more, the new files a lot more, and some concepts. One little thing to note just before I start um, is that uh, as we go back and forth from our browser uh, to the application, we're relying on the fact that not only our Rails server is launched, but the Redis uh, server is launched as well. Uh, Rails 5 comes with Redis built in, uh, but you can swap it out for Postgres if you want now. Uh, if you've never installed Redis, you can brew install Redis, uh, and you'll have to do so. Uh, and you'll have to start two servers in two different cell shells, unless you have something like Foreman or Pow handling it both at the same time. So you won't see me do this. I'm just gonna have Redis running in the background so we don't have to talk about it over and over. So let's get started. Um, we'll be building a chat application called Atlanta Chat. Uh, and I'll break down its construction into three different phases. Uh, the first phase, uh, we'll establish a basic Rails app and connect Action Cable from the client side to the server side and back to the client side. In the second phase, uh, we'll tweak that connection to create a fully functional uh, chat room single room chat room. And in the final phase, we'll authenticate our users using Devise and Warden and hooking up uh, the WebSocket connection uh, to our main Rails application. Cool. All right, so to get started, uh, let's make sure that we have the most recent version of Rails. Uh, otherwise, we'll have to add Action Cable as a gem to our gem file and add a lot of crucial files by hand, which can be a pain in the butt. At the moment, the most recent version of Rails, as Al mentioned, is Rails 5 Beta 3. So that command looks like this. Now that we've created our app, let's jump in. We're gonna get a room controller with one show action and a model, a message model with a text column called content to back it up. Um, before we jump into our code, let's migrate our database. As Al mentioned too, uh, notice that this command starts with Rails and not Rake. Uh, this Rails 5 upgrade is aimed at making the framework more beginner friendly, but everywhere Rake uh, was working before will still work, so you don't need to use it. All right, opening up our app, let's start by adjusting our routes file to make sure uh, that show action is our landing page. Move over to our rooms controller and set an instance variable to hold all the instances of our messages. On our show, plate, uh, show template, it comes looking like this. Let's erase all that default <coughs> HTML to render our messages. Something short and sweet, uh, but we need a message parcel for those messages rendering to work. So we'll create a messages directory and add that partial. And put our message content in there. Uh, before we check out what this looks like, uh, we need to add a message into our database so we have something to look at. So we'll open up the console and create a message. So now we'll start the server, load the host 3000, make sure everything looks right. Um, we don't need Redis yet because Action Cable's turned off and everything looks good. So let's start integrating Action Cable. To do anything with Action Cable uh, features in Rails 5, you need to generate a channel first. Without a channel, you can't define a connection and your WebSockets have nothing to broadcast over. So this is the format for the new generator. Uh, it requires a name and accepts optional actions. For Atlanta chat, we'll generate a chat channel with a speak action. The command is going to output this in your shell, 
uh, the creation of a chat channel RB in your app channels directory and a chat coffee in your JavaScript channel directory. Before we look at these, we have to turn action cable on. Default, it's off. Uh, there's two places you turn it on, one on the client side and one on the server side. The client side switch is found in a cable coffee file that was generated in your JavaScript directory. It comes looking like this, and you enable action cable by merely uncommenting the last two lines. Notice this sets a global app variable, if it doesn't already exist, and returns and assigns action cables create consumer functionality to app's cable property. To do it on the server side, we head over to the routes folder and uncomment the last line uh, to mount the action cable server. <coughs> Voila, it is turned on. So now let's hook up that speak functionality in our chat channel so we can post messages to our app. This is our generated client side chat coffee. The top three functions are standard and come with every newly generated action cable channel. The fourth, fun the fourth function we created when we passed in speak to our generator. Uh, let's take a look at this file line by line. The very top line is the second time we've seen something assigned to our global app variable. Uh, simply calling app cable subscriptions create and passing in a name will set up a subscription and this will automatically call uh, chat, the chat channel subscribe on the server side. The first function is uh, in, this, in this subscription is called connected. And it's called, of course, uh, once you're successfully connected. It, it does not have any, uh, let's see what I'm about to say. If you don't have any special JavaScript needs, this function isn't required. You can delete it. So for instance, once your channel connects, if you want to do something on the screen, you can add it there, but it's not necessary. Disconnected is its evil twin. Uh, when the subscription has been terminated, whatever JavaScript you put in here will get executed. Uh, you can also safely delete this should you not need it or want it. The receive function is something you definitely do want. Uh, this is where all the data getting sent from the server is collected by the client side half of your channel. The data argument is JSON uh, set up with whatever you want from the back end. And we'll look at this function a lot more later. Finally, here's the speak action we generated. Uh, there's also a speak action on the server side channel. The reference perform function is a magic word that connects this client side file to the server side. So right now, by default, app chat speak will simply execute speak on the back end. Before we head over to the server side, let's add a message argument to speak and pass that message in as a value to a key also named message. This key value pair will get rendered as JSON automatically. Notice I'm not writing an uh, Ajax request. It's just handling it all right here. Remember our channel generator created two files. So we just looked at the client side file, chat coffee. Uh, this is the server side file, chat channel RB. So let's hook up that speak method while it's fresh in our heads. Uh, Rails provided us this much. We're gonna accept uh, the data we passed in and we're gonna create a message. Okay, now that we've enabled our speak function to save a record to our database, uh, let's step back and look at the rest of this file before we continue. Chat channel is a class that inherits from action cable channel. Every server side uh, cable RB comes with two methods. The first is subscribe, and I mentioned it before. Uh, when we called app cable subscriptions create chat channel on the client side, this method was automatically called right away. Right now it does nothing. Uh, let's uncomment the stream from command and call this channel chat channel. It should be noted that our channel RB does not need a subscribe method either. Uh, you can delete it and, and set up something else. What you do need is that stream from. If you don't have any stream from command in your channel, you're never connecting to that PubSub WebSocket server. Uh, the other default method in the channel is unsubscribed. This method is not ex needs to be explicitly called and is here to remind you to close the door when you leave. We can accomplish that with the command stop all streams. And so here is our chat channel RB. It's what it looks like now. If you haven't read the comment at the top yet, uh, it reads, be sure to restart your server when you modify this file. Since Action Cable runs on a loop and has the WebSocket server, it doesn't support auto-reloading. 
Really important to remember because you can get really frustrated if you're expecting it to. All right, there hasn't been a picture in a while, so I figured we'd take a breather. <laughs> um, so what we've done is a little more setup in our channel RB, uh, but we need to let the client side know that we've created our message and it's ready. Uh, so let's finish this first phase uh, by sending our message back to the client. So how do we do this? Action Cable uses a broadcast method to communicate from the, ser uh, yeah, from the server to the client. Action Cable server broadcast requires the name of the channel to know where, where to go. And you'll get that right from your subscribe method above. These need to match. Then it optionally takes a hash of data uh, that gets rendered automatically as JSON up to the client side. So let's add this to our speak method after the message is created. And now we can jump back to the client side of the channel. This broadcast call will be received in, you guessed it, the received function. Everything will be received in the received function. And so let's console log our message and check out if everything is working. So let's do that. So I have Redis running in the background. I'm going to start my Rails server now. I got two sessions up here. One's a normal browser. One's incognito. Whoa. So yeah. Interesting. All right. So here's our app. There's not much to it yet. Let's jump in the console and take a look at what's going on. So we have that app variable that I mentioned. There it is in our console. We can check it out. You can see it has a cable and then a chat subscription generated from our chat channel. We open that up and check out our chat. You can see our connected function in there and there's our speak function that we added in. So to make sure this connection is working, oops. Let's call app speak, app chat speak. If everything works right, since we've been a console log, it will uh, update the console. Now you notice I have two browsers up. It's over the red socket, uh, uh, pardon me, the Redis connection. So once I type this in, if everything is hooked up right, it will not only show in the console of this client, of this user, it will also show up in this other console. So. And there it is. So she showed up in both consoles. So everything's working so far. Um, here, break off path here. Let me show you this too. You'll see in the console right here, there's the creation of the, uh, of the message. You'll see that chat channel. It's, no, it's, it's letting me know that it's transmitting uh, on the subscription. So it's working. It's streaming from this channel right here. <coughs> There's my message that I sent, it's creation, and it's broadcasting, streaming that channel. Cool. Console that. All right, let's jump back into the slides. So we've accomplished what we wanted to in phase one, the connection, the connection is up. You can check out that repo that I just showed you at Atlanta Chat phase one in my GitHub. Uh, next, we want to make sure uh, that the user can add and view messages themselves. So obviously, they're not going to jump into the console. So let's go back to our room show page and drop in a tiny form to input messages and look like this. Looks like this in the browser. And let's create a new JavaScript file to handle this once the document object model is ready. In this new file, we'll leverage jQuery to listen uh, for when the form is submitted. Once it's submitted, we call prevent default on the event to prevent it from hitting the server and refreshing the page. Then we'll access our client side channel by calling app chat speak, just like we did in the console and passing in the contents of that message. And then finally, we'll clear out the input by setting its value to an empty string. Because this file is located in the JavaScript directory, the Rails asset, uh, asset pipeline will load it automatically, uh, but we have to call the function at the appropriate time. So I'm gonna add one line of inline JavaScript at the bottom of my view. Right now, this makes no sense. The whole application is one view, uh, but it will later on when we add a couple more. So we're just handling this now. 
All right, so let's test this in the browser. I've refreshed my page and deleted all but our first comment from my console. I'll add a message, click Submit, and boom, it logged to the console as expected. Let's try refreshing the page to make sure it's saved to our uh, server, to our database, pardon me. And there it did. So it successfully got created and saved. Uh, now we need to have our JavaScript uh, render that message in the channel versus waiting for the server to load it on a refresh. So let's head back to our chat coffee file. And instead of logging the message to our console in our receive function, we're going to simply append it to the messages div. Jump back into our browser, type in a message, press submit. There it is. Let's do one more. Uh oh. Uh, it looks like the text isn't really getting formatted right. Let's inspect our HTML to see what's going on. All right, well, there's our messages, but you notice they're just getting passed in as text. Makes sense. That's what it's set up to do. But we don't want them there. We want them in a div. So let's fix it. Uh, back in our chat channel, our speak method is broadcasting the contents of our message back to the client side as a string of text. Since we don't want to clog up our channel with view logic, let's factor out these commands into a job and work our HTML there. So speak becomes message broadcast job perform later with our content passed in, the message property of the data object. We need to create a message broadcast job file now. Uh, this generator will take care of it. The app jobs directory and active job functionality started getting packaged with Rails 4.2 in the summer of 2014. So if you're working on anything that's uh, before 4.2, you might not be as familiar with jobs. But here's what that generator created. Let's paste in the message creation and broadcast commands we just deleted. This, this looks pretty similar to our speak method before. Notice we modified the argument we are receiving. Instead of getting the value of a message from a data object, we're now directly passing in the content of that message. And instead of broadcasting the content back, we are broadcasting the message object. That's not going to work. So let's render that message object with a new method called render message. We'll write this uh, method directly in our job, and we get to use a new awesome Rails 5 feature function to do it. Rails 5 comes with a renderer baked into application controller. Using this renderer method, we can render out HTML anywhere in our program. The complete method looks like this. We've indicated the path to our partial. And we passed in the message object uh, to a key message. To assign it, uh, and we're passing it to the key message because this assigns it to the instance variable in our partial of that name. Cool, so our completed job looks like this. And that should complete phase two. So let's take a look at that real quick. Refresh my pages. Oops, I didn't change repos. Try that one more time. One cool thing to notice is when I just turned off that server, because I haven't stopped all my streams, the Reddit server is still up. So you will continually get WebSocket, uh, WebSocket connection errors in your console. You leave this running and come back a couple hours later, the number will be up to like 150. Surprise, it hasn't gone up to three yet. But your console is a great place to figure that out if you're devving something out. All right. So I've Launched our phase two app here. There's our form for some delicious taco action. All right, we're just gonna check that things work. So now, oops. There we go, enter, boom. Immediately broadcast to whomever's at this endpoint. Great. Let's jump back in. All right. So phase two is now done. We have a fully functional app that we can post messages in. You can check that repo out as well at Atlanta Chat Phase Two. 
Last piece of business is setting up users in our app. Right now, anyone can post and no one would know who's doing it. However, the WebSocket server runs on a separate process as we've talked about from the main Rails app, so authentication can be a little bit trickier than normal. Um, to make this applicable, we're going to use Devise and, and Warden along with Action Cable's connection functionality. Not here to talk about Devise. It's a great Rails authentication solution based on Warden, uh, but here's how you'll quickly get it set up. One, add the Devise gem into your gem file. Two, run bundle install to install it. Three, Rails generate uh, the in initializer. And four, Rails generate a, a user model. The name of this model could be anything. We're going to use the standard user. Huh? <laughs> Tell me later. <laughs> <laughs> this generates a migration as well. It's actually not a security problem. It's a design problem. OK. <laughs> All right, before we migrate, uh, let's think about our messages model. We want a user to have their own messages, so let's set up our relationships. Our message model will belong to a user, and our newly generated user model will have many messages. And we'll create a migration to get the user ID in our message model. Uh oh. Uh, using edge tech, it can create some compatibility issues. Uh, to get device to stop throwing up in our console, uh, we'll have to pull from GitHub's most recent version of device, uh, specifically the Rails 5 branch. So update your gem file and run bundle install again. And as a side note, uh, this process I'm taking you through uh, used to be filled with a lot more gaps and a lot more other problems and things going on. Uh, a couple months ago, you'd have to pull four different gems from GitHub and tweak a bunch of files as you go and even move stuff out of files and move them to other locations. So the good news is that this is one of the very last snags. Um, so take note, if you're researching and doing this stuff, if, if you're looking at something that's a few months old, there's a lot of things that have changed. Try to get something really recent. They are ironing out the bugs, but uh, there's still stuff in there. So let's try our migration one more time, and success. Now let's fill out this migration so it adds the user ID column, and migrate our database. All right, so now we're going to jump into the application controller to authenticate our users before they have access to our chat room. And let's do a quick browser check. Yay. Looks like everything's set up. All right, but we need, uh, but when I log in and look at our messages, we still can't see who wrote which ones. So let's adjust our message parcel to reflect the user. Instead of this, uh, we're going to add the user's email to identify each person. So let's log, log back on and check out what this looks like. All right, this error is totally anticipated. Uh, we had a few messages in there that didn't have an affiliated user. So I'm going to log into my Rails console, destroy all existing messages, and try one more time. OK. Now it loads. Let's write a message and click Submit. Where'd it go? Uh, I checked my browser console, and it didn't log any errors. So let's check out the server logs. Uh, if you can read that, and it's pretty big, maybe you can read it, uh, you'll see the log tells us that our chat channel is transmitting the subscription confirmation and that is streaming from chat channel, right? It shows that chat channel speak was called with our message object, delicious tacos. Um, it then queues up the message broadcast job, and if we scroll right, we'll see that the message broadcast job is getting hit, but the message did not successfully create. But we know that the problem's happening in our job, so let's check out over there. Small, but does anybody see what problem is by chance? Yes. We need to pass uh, the user to our message. Messages can't, can't work without a user. Our message relies on the user, and here is that message trying to get created without one. Shouldn't break script. Uh, this is where action cable authentication becomes a little more complicated. Since this job is getting called by the channel, and the channel is running on the WebSocket server, we don't have devices handy current user method to just dump it in here. To get access to our user, uh, we have to write some more code in another action cable file. We've already written our chat channel, but we haven't touched that application folder that's hanging out here too. So let's open it up and we'll see our two new files, a channel RB and a connection RB. The channel RB comes out looking like this. This file is for shared logic between your channels. We only have one channel, so there's nothing to do here. 
The connection RB looks pretty much the same. Uh, it extends application cable module with a connection class that inherits from action cable connection base. Uh, for every WebSocket connection the cable server is accepting, a connection object is uh, instantiated. This instance becomes the parent of all the channel subscriptions that are created from there on. Incoming messages are then routed uh, to these channel subscriptions based on the identifier sent by the cable consumer. First thing we're going to do is have to add that identifier into our connection. Um, you can set, evidently, uh, you, can, you can set as many identified by keys that you would like. I have not seen anyone from all the applications online, which I've looked at a lot. I've not seen anyone do two yet. They say you can. We only need one. We only want one for our user. So we're going to call it current user. Um, using this method automatically sets up a setter and getter for current, uh, for current user as well. So we don't need to do that. Uh, next, we'll define our connect method. Uh, this gets fired off upon instantiation. Uh, it sets the current user to the result of a find verify user function. And also adds the string action cable and a string of the current user's email to our server logs, which will make it easier for looking at our server to see who's doing what where. All right, finally, we're going to uh, write that find verified user method below. Uh, if the ID of a user can be found in the cookies of their device, then, then that user is verified. Otherwise, authorization is rejected. But why would cookies signed user ID be giving us the ID of a user? We need to do something else to get this set up, um, which maybe, hopefully, Devise will handle I, in the future. Um, we are going to have to tie in a couple Warden hooks to set that value in our cookies. So Warden is a rack-based middleware uh, designed to provide mechanism for authentication in Ruby apps. And since Devise is built on top of Warden, we don't need to add it to our gem file. We just already have access to it. But Warden doesn't have a logo, so I figured this picture would have to do. And unless somebody knows if Warden has a logo, I can find it. <laughs> anyway. Um, so let's create a new initializer for this middleware in our app. You'll see if you're looking at other people do this, some of them just dump it at the end of the device, uh, device middleware with the initializer that they set up. Why do that? Might as well just create a new file. Um, OK, and then let's add an after set user and a before logout hook on the Warden manager. Both of these methods contain a user, auth, and option objects. So we need to, uh, what we need to do is to set the scope, get the scope, and assign the ID of our logged in user to our cookies. You notice that uh, we erased that assignment before logout. So we better add a logout link to the show page to give users this option because we haven't done that. All right, heading back to our connection RB. That was it. <laughs> uh, the, the completed class now looks like this, uh, and it will give us access to a user in our action cable server. So let's pass in the current user to our chat channel RB so we can create some messages. Last we saw it, the speak method uh, was sending responsibility to our message broadcast job. So let's add the current user in like so. Head over to our job and catch that user on our performed action and pass it to our message creator. And so now let's check out if everything's working. All right. Yeah, there we go. 38. Because that this time I closed down the server before I went to the presentation. So WebSockets have tried to connect 38 times. All right, refresh. Excellent. All right. Oh, balls. Uh, I'm supposed to be doing a sign up. Let's try it one more time. <laughs> oh, look at all this. All right, so let's sign up. Awesome. Let's get another user in there, too. Oh, am I? <laughs> Sorry.
All right. Great. So I, I deleted all of our messages. If that needed to happen, all the messages are gone. So we have two different, two different people here. One's incognito, one's normal. This would just be if, if this was in production, any two people on any two different connections. So there we can see Bob user over here, loves tacos. And Sponge, user over here, loves notches. And you'll see that it instantly updates. So the WebSocket connection is working. Uh, I didn't plan this either, but let me show you. I showed you the logs before. You see, we added that in there. What did we add in there? <coughs> so broadcasting the chat channel, there's our message. Broadcast job, we can see who's sending it now here because we added the current user's email. And it even says we added that action cable right there into our logs too. Cool. Useful, extremely useful as you run into a billion bugs, or I run into a billion bugs, it's very out. All right, almost done. Let's go back to our slides real quick. Great, so that does complete our third goal to get authentication into our chat room. You can check that repo out at Atlanta Chat Phase 3 on my GitHub. Now let's do like a, a review just to understand what we just went through. First thing we did is we created a basic message app and connected our action cable channel. We did this by using the perform command on the client side and passed the name, uh, passing it the name of the method we wanted on the server side. We also passed it the name of the channel. Uh, we saved our message and sent it back to the client using a broadcast and then caught that data in a CoffeeScript received function. Next, we added a, a form to our chat room and some JavaScript to catch a message. We created a message broadcast job to handle saving that data and use the application controller renderer to serve up that new record in the appropriate Rails partial in real time. We didn't put any HTML on some kind of front end framework. We didn't redo what we'd just done. We were just using one, one template. And finally, we hooked up device along with some warden hooks and the connection RB to establish a user identity uh, on both the Rails server and the WebSocket server. If you'd like to see some more complex action cable architecture, check out this Battleship app I created. Uh, it's open source. You can see uh, what file modifications I had to make to get it up on Heroku. I did not have to pay for my subscription to Heroku, although I did have to verify my credit card information, which I hadn't done yet. So Action Cable is up live for free. Um, and the link, yeah, so the link's at the top and the repo's at the bottom. You can play computer AI or you can play online with, with somebody else. Cool. I'm a freelance web developer working for a few companies in Atlanta, but I'm open to full-time job opportunities. Thanks again for having me back. I am now happy to answer any questions anybody has about Action Cable. If there are. And oh, yes, yes. So in your opinion, like given where we are now, like how far now we are even rails saying it's stable to like where you would feel comfortable saying hey you should use the connection now? I would say eighty percent because um I, with that battleship app created, I ran into some issues. Um you'll you'll find examples that use follow and unfollow instead of subscribe and unsubscribe. And there's I, I couldn't figure it out at the time, but there's some sort of async issue when the first person arrives and hits a follow method that streams from a channel, it works, but sometimes it doesn't always work. I'm not actually exactly sure why. And I don't think it has something to do with the lack of me understanding it. I think it was set up correctly. So there's still, there's still that, and of course there's still the word, word hooks thing. Device will probably work that out so you don't have to do that anymore. Um, I, I'm a junior developer, so I also, I don't feel like I have enough knowledge about other front-end frameworks with good WebSocket connections to know whether this is better. I understand this now and I can use it and it doesn't involve, there's just a few keywords and once you wrap your head around all the communicating back and forth and dealing with other people, um, it's pretty cool. We didn't do it in this example, but when we set the, uh, the, thing, uh, the room as chat channel, the stream as chat channel, we could have passed in uh, a user ID or we could have passed in some unique value to the user to set up a specific stream for that person. So for instance, if you're adding like a little chat window on the, on the bottom of your you know, business website for a salesperson to have like instant connection uh, with somebody and help them out, you could, do, you could do it with this by just putting, uh, seeing what stream is up 
and then that person being able to connect just with that person and then and not broadcast to every single person with that website up. Um, so it does a lot of cool stuff and it's getting, they're working out more and more bugs that would make this presentation smaller and smaller. Uh, if this, I've done this presentation two months ago, it would have been even longer because there's a lot more stuff to do. So I'd say 80, 90%. I'm not totally convinced, but since you know about actual cables, um, I think I know the answer, but why is it being added to rail? Is it so that we don't have to use Angular and things? Like, what's the official reasoning for making part for? I mean, I think the only person that can truly answer that is probably DHH. Uh, but, um, yeah, I mean, it does add a, a lot of new functionality that, that you know, works. <laughs> uh, it might be an attempt to create a framework that is so so complete that you don't need a front end framework and a, and a back end framework to create you know some 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 great stuff. Um, yeah, I I couldn't tell you his motivation to go this route, but it's cool. I don't know. It'd be an opinion. The answer would only be an opinion. There's no objective objective answer. Any anybody else with questions about any of this stuff? If there's your battleship scale. Hmm? There's your battleship at scale. Why don't you go and find out? Yeah. Do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you mean like everybody wants to know? <laughs> right now. Well, it's on a, a single gotcha. dyno. I mean, <laughs> it's, you... Yeah. Yeah, I need to clean it up too, but. Uh, any other questions? And feel free, I'll be hanging out if you have other questions over beer after the meetup. Thanks for having me. This video has been sponsored by Rietta Incorporated. Learn more today at rietta.com.